Welcome back to Lost in Rosha, the ultimate journey through the Stormlight Archive. I'm Christian Kremling. And I'm Jimmy Stormblast. Today, we are diving into chapters five and six of Words of Radiance. This is full spoilers for the Stormlight Archive. And uh, this is pretty much a reread podcast. So if you haven't read the series, we'll see you later. For everyone else, welcome back. I almost forgot what chapters we were in, Christian, because it's been a minute. It's been a while. It has been a minute, yeah. How, how have you been in this in this long minute, this long gap between episodes, Jimmy? What's going on? Tired. Yeah. I've been tired, Christian. <laughs> and I, I work with people who I think are stupid. <laughs> so oh, I've just, right. just been, uh, you just know, been trying to keep my head. I'm, I'm trying to straighten out my drive on the driving range, you know, and just slicing every shot. Very frustrating. Um, but, you know, we're, we're, we're moving on, living on and uh, try, trying to get back here into Words of Radiance. Good thing we're just here at the beginning. So I don't feel like I've completely lost my bearings yet. Um, but how are you doing, man? Yeah, I'm okay, man. I had um, a lot of time to reflect on the pod in these uh, two weeks off. It's good to like kind of step back every now and then and be like, what are, What am I doing? What's What's the point? Um, if any, is there a point? Probably not. No, but I, I was just like, what is the goal of Austin Rocha? Why am I doing it? Like, where are we headed with this thing? Which I think is a good thing to think about because sometimes you just keep doing stuff out of habit and you're mm-hmm. like, why, why was I doing that? You know, sometimes I look at an old video on my channel. I'm like, why, why did I post that? That's stupid. Like, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Um, but luckily, I've, I landed on Lost in Roshar. It's a good thing, and I want to keep doing it. <laughs> so, you, so you, you saw it as a net positive. I saw it as a net positive. I was like, at the very least, it's an excuse to get, like, Jimmy out of his golfing schedule to, like, have a chat with me. A little, off, a little putt putt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little putt putt golf for the driving range. I mean, uh, I was actually just having this conversation with a friend and they were saying how like I I personally struggle, like me, I I struggle with uh like what how does this end? Like I'm real big on knowing how things end. Like where does this going? How's it scale? What what comes to conclusion? Hmm. And a lot of times I use that as a, a a reason to one either quit things or to not start them. And they were like, You do know you're allowed to just like be in the moment, right? Yeah. And I was I, like, you know, <laughs> You might be right. Like, I never thought of that. <laughs> I <I've laughs> but... totally have that same struggle. Like all yeah. the time I've thought that. Um, I'm like, what? So what's the gain of this? And yeah, it's just I, I did end up on I just kind of like doing it. And maybe that's enough. Would you yeah. say that it's maybe possibly in the realm of a journey before destination? <laughs> one might. One See might what we did that, there. Oh, and this is why we're the number one Stormlight podcast. These Revelation. I think we're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> They're out there, mate. They do exist. Um, but no one is as Kremlin focused as, as us, um, which is, you know, a point of pride for me. And sometimes you just gotta, you gotta pop out and show them, you know, you just gotta, <laughs> you gotta do a little Kendrick Lamar. You gotta show them what, what's really good. <laughs> and then, uh, not like us and, and move on with it. I mean, uh, it, it's good to be back. Do we have any uh, Sanderson updates over the last like three weeks? Yeah, <laughs> he, the main, he, I always play Elden Ring. I always play Elden Ring. Ring. Um, oh like most of the, you know, the people Nerd. of this world, yeah. they, are, they are playing Elden Ring. And um, except for me, because I'm one of those few people, I'm going to out myself. Like it, it, it was just so difficult and I just wasn't bothered. Is that okay? Is we everyone usually just say me we now? usually say get good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, whenever whenever <laughs> folks say that, in the no, no, I totally get it. Uh, fun fact about me: uh, I love the Souls games. They are my favorite games. From Soft's my favorite studio of all time. I uh, play every one of them. The only one I didn't like uh, very much was Sekiro, which is like everyone's favorite. But it just I didn't I didn't care for it very much, even though I think it's an amazing game. Um, but fun fact about me is I tried Dark Souls for the first time in like two thousand and. 13 mm-hmm. i tried it six times over the years and it didn't click with me until i played the demon souls remake for my ps5 i got at launch and there was no other games so i bought demon <laughs> souls and i'm like well i guess i'm just gonna have to figure this out and i i finally got into it you know from almost by played of forcing demon. myself right from what i played of demon souls i've I I jammed with that more than um, Dark Souls as well. Oh, that's crazy! Because Demon I, Souls is super ridiculous, like comparatively. Oh, like, yeah. There's so many things that are better about Dark Souls, but it's pretty. It's so. I think I was just like, "Ooh, graphics!" and I just wanted to keep seeing where it went. Um, but yeah, enough on FromSoft before we go on a big tangent, um, <laughs> dude. This is a book, um, Words of Radiance, that I have 
this these two chapters i've probably read the most of words of radiance because i keep thinking we're going to record and then we don't and then this week i'm like i'm not reading them again i just cannot i'm sorry kaladin and shalat i do love you but i can't read you judging adolin one more time mate i just can't do it so for adolin forgive us if this um analysis isn't as deep as usual but i i figured it, it would also be a good opportunity if we fly through these chapters to um catch up on a couple span reads um and we do get like ever since we we praised jean carlo's verbose um email we do get span reads that are span pages <laughs> and it's like and stories if you yeah, will yeah they are so funny but i'm like if we read this on the show it will be another half an hour so it's like yes Maybe we need to like episodically cut up some some span reads into like paragraphs. That might be a good idea. I do know the one I want to read today is uh, talking about Lear and being honor, which we are all kind of on the same page for, I think. Oh, uh, dude. It feels likely. You know, you know, it's cool. I was perusing Reddit and I saw our name come up because um, the Lear and honor theory came up and um, the guy who made the post on that was like, hey, that's my theory. Here's the link. And then someone replied to him, was like, hey, Lost in Roshar talked about your theory. And they're like, what? What's that? So, Which that- which is funny because that theory <laughs> that we talked about came from my friend Garrick, who had just read through the series for the first time. Right, 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 right. And finished. And then he said that. And then me and him both went searching to see, hey, has anyone ever thought about that? And then we found that guy's theory. That's cool. So my friend Garrick is the one who gets credit for me because he's the one who came up with it to me. And then we validated that other people felt like that by finding that post. So That's I'm just saying cool. <laughs> two smart people have come up with it and definitely convinced me. Yeah, definitely. Not so not. it's canon. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I, man, one day I, I want to get in early on the theory train of wind and truth so I can be like, "That's my theory." That is. I mean, my you have to have theory. some out there. You know surely I mean? one of them. Surely one of them. I think you've your your theory is the bloodthirsty rock bud theory, and uh, I'll think of something. And 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 uh, breath uh, breaths being used for Gavilar statue. Yeah, that's very pervasive through the fandom that's a huge one you know is it yeah yeah people have talked about that i thought it was a trendsetter yeah that's upsetting (laughs) but yeah send us an update like he's playing video games and he's (laughs) you know and (laughs) you know very relatable guy um as as far as i know the rpg is coming out soon they're building up the hype, hype train for that um wind and truth oh i know it's a big i know it's a big one which is okay because i've the, the break has messed with my head a bit, but we got the UK cover of Wind and Truth. Oh, yeah. And it looks yeah. like Dalinar kind of looking at maybe possibly a moon or something, sun going down, which we've been talking about. It's a huge Ooh. moment that's coming. Yeah. Well, the thing is, right, I thought of that too, but as an owner of the UK editions, they all have that sun. It's kind of just like the motif oh, of, they've uh, been of the series. They've been, yeah, it could be a little hint or, a, or an artistic flair. Not too sure. But my favorite, because I posted that, on my community tab on YouTube to be like, guys, the cover, look how good it looks. And some guy was like, Dalinar flexing his Nikes. And I like looked at his shoes. I'm like, oh my God, they're right. <laughs> they oh like, no. Have you seen it? He's got the Nike swoosh on his, that is... on his suits. Come on. That's, I mean, <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't unsee it. And then someone replied to that was like the, um, the contest of champions it's just um dalinar duncan on mosh moash and he's uh and he's nike airs so you know we've learned a lot from this cover that nike is on rosha and uh dalinar still holding his copy of the way of kings which is to be commended man let me tell you what what he does he does look like he's wearing nike dunks this is crazy <laughs> but it's a very ominous cover don't you think it's like the looming threat in the distance, Dalinar gazing off. And my thought, as as I'm sure many of you are thinking, looking at this, is the guy's dead. He's got to die, right? With this cover, it's over. Do you think? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm still on the train of I think Dalinar doesn't make it out. I mean, he might end up being whatever, right? Mm-hmm. It, he might end up being a... Um, like a bad like a corrupted evil he could be corrupted or he could become the storm father but like things for dalinar are are going to be drastically different if he's still alive after anyways Hmm. and look there there was a big debate about like oh the uk covers suck where's michael whelan and look michael whelan's 
the GOAT of fantasy yeah. covers. There's no disputing that. Um, there is something satisfying about the the UK editions of Sanderson books. They all look great in your shelf. They match. But a criticism I have for, for the Stormlight covers is um, it's usually ambiguous as to which character they're showing. It could just be like a place, like the first part of Way of Kings as it's released now, it's just like some dude in shard plate, like n- nondescript guy in shard plate. And it's a bit like you kind of want to see your your main characters and even Rhythm of War, Shalan with the spear. I'm like, this doesn't really capture Shalan's energy very well. But this is the first time I've been like, oh, wow, this is like, this is Dalinar. This, that's the Way of Kings he's holding. Like, it's very like, I can uh, understand exactly what they're going for, right? Yeah. Um, but that's a real big highlight of the Michael Whalen covers because it's like so it brings the series to life. And I wonder if he will also do Dalinar um, on the front cover for that book as well. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, has there been any congruency between the UK and the Whalen covers to this point? I don't believe so. Like, because um, there's so many editions, right? Because at first they come out in one edition in the UK. And then they split into two parts just because they're so they're so big and that's how they sell the books. So we have had Seth, um, Shalan, Yasna, but it's never it oh actually no, it does match because um Oathbringer had Yasna on the front in the US and UK. And then yeah, Rhythm of War was Shalan as well. Yeah, so actually it probably will um align, actually. So I do expect to see now Dalina on the US cover, which will be very, very cool. Because Yeah, seeing Waylon do Dalinar will be really neat. Right. Because the the thing that as much as I love the Way of Kings cover, one thing that's always bothered me about the US one is like it's not really clear who that is. Um because it's like that, a that's red, true. It's a red cape. That's not Dalinar. He wears a blue cape. It's like just some dude. It doesn't match really, actually, what's happening in the story and supposedly it's him holding um is it a sphere or whatever up to to eshenai on the other side of the chasm but it doesn't really it doesn't it's not what's described in the book it's not a one for one right no so it's just like oh damn uh, but from there on out it's pretty it's pretty darn accurate um what they show you i think still to my, if i had to rank the covers the u.s covers i think my favorite is actually um Rhythm of War. I love the I, I love agree. the way it looks. The colors are great. Shalans, like the the front with Shalan and Adolin on the back, looking at that weird uh, lasting integrity tower. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And then followed by the glorious. I'm, I'm sorry, Yasna with her with her shard blade Earthbringer. On, on Earthbringer with the stairs going yep. up and the thunderclass in the back. Actually, yeah, I think the weak, weakest one is like Hero Kaladin on Words of Radiance, just doing his hero landing. I don't know. Mm, it's cool. I see that. It's definitely cool. But yeah, um, I feel like books three and four's covers are like pretty high above the other two for me. Yeah. And there's there is the thing of like the words of radiance front and back covers together kind of spoil the climax, which is but at the same time, so does Oathbringer. But the Seth Kaladin face off is something you're always curious about. Um mm-hmm. um, interesting to to, th- to throw it on the cover i mean i don't mind too much but i, I mean that just it. tells us that you know whatever we see on the whaling cover could be a big spoiler yeah i want i want so like they tend to do the front and back split right so like dalinar on the front who could be on the back you know maybe Gabalor. probably like an ominous sh- a shadow or something Gabalor. like a- <laughs> it's, it's stone gavilar <laughs> can you imagine it's it's a baby from the huggies commercial <laughs> <laughs> oh man i just i just know that i'm gonna be like looking at every inch of that um cover to like find out whatever whatever is possible oh yeah um but man i loved when whenever once we get that cover the book is real the uk cover is great but once we see the us it's like okay here we go baby it's yeah because the US is the best yeah i know what you mean it's uh no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> I have to be the arrogant American. That's my character on the show, I think, right? <laughs> yeah. Lean into wow. it, mate. Now, we're getting close to the pre-release chapters. Am I, am I right? Very close. Any I mean, day it now. should be it should be any week now. I, I would be shocked if it's not within the next three weeks. I'll be frothing at the mouth. But I, I think uh, it'll be a slow build because, like, he's already read the prologue. He's already read Shalon's first chapter. So it's like. But I haven't read them. 
Oh, oh yeah, you yeah, haven't read the prologue, mate. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, I haven't done anything. What's I've going on, dude? Waiting like a good good guy over here, you know? Uh, there might have been edits. You never know. I, yeah, I'm sure there are because there are some not canon. mistakes. Um, They're not canon, bro. <laughs> well, in your head, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm canon only over here. It, for, for in my brain is like canon, canon until you guilty, like until proved innocent, but canon version. Canon until yes. proved non-canon. That's my. Oh. How else are you going to make theories? How else <laughs> that's true. That's fair. Um, but hey, look, these were these were two cool chapters. The Shalama and like cuts off writers things get quite interesting. But there's a little mm-hmm. bit of there's a there's a cool de- details um, that I do remember that I wanted to point out. I remember the Kaladin chapter being quite long, but it's what I think will be the coolest to talk about is Sadius, like the little peek into Sadius's mind we get into yes. in this chapter, which is a rare thing. Um, but in hindsight, you're like, oh, yeah, he's introducing Sadius now because he's gonna, you know, he's gonna cop at this book, so we're gonna get a bit of his perspective thrown in. Feels yeah, very make it, make it a little bit more. Yeah. 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 Like you kind of see Sanderson's um, intention now on the reread a lot clearer. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there's anything else about the. Oh, well, look, we had a poll. We did have a poll last time. This was a Jake poll because it's about hockey. Um, man, this was Ew. ages ago. This was so long ago. Um, but we should address it for the people who are binging this like a year in the future who don't feel the gap. They're like, why didn't you talk about the poll? All right, so the poll was, um, in a 5v5 hockey game, which team wins? A team of Mistborn or a team of Radiance with any order combination? The Radiance smashed it with 71% of the votes. Team Mistborn, 29%. Um, but the comments, man, this is where, this is the part of like the Cosmere fandom where I, I feel like I'm drowning, where people start talking about like, if you use this power, come on with this power, and then you do this, then of course the radiance would. I'm like, I, oh, like you know, I lose interest. This, I, it's I, just like, too much. It's just too much, like anime power scaling and stuff. It's, it's. I just like, I'll leave that to Sanderson to show me where he will take that, and I will enjoy it as a reader. But like, I like um, making theories about like plot and and character secrets and developments. But when it's like, who would beat who with the Cosmere because it's so developed it can sometimes get so convoluted that I'm like, I don't know. I really don't know. But um, the yeah. comments were very supportive of Team Mistborn. Um, I don't know. Did you weigh in on this one? <laughs> I did, I actually did not. I did okay. not weigh in on this one. The thing is, I don't know much about hockey because um, people are like, is the puck metal? I don't know. I've never, I've never engaged with a hockey puck. Sorry to say. I've been more of a football slash soccer person. So, yeah, I don't know, mate. I guess uh, I guess that one's done. Nothing else to say. What a crappy thanks, Jake. <laughs> what a crappy uh, you know addition from me. I needed Jake needed to to be on the other end to like talk about that because I got nothing to add. But I guess ratings are pretty op. Yeah, I personally think that Jake should not be in charge of any more poll <laughs> questions. <laughs> Outed. How did on air? Look, I just was reminded of the start of Rhythm of War, where um, Kaladin's neck is repeatedly getting stabbed through, um, cutting his spinal cord, and he just keeps healing on the fly. And I'm like, yeah, well, I didn't like that. <laughs> I'm like, how do you kill this guy? <laughs> this is like- yeah. the healing thing in any fantasy has always been a little missy for me. Like, I'm not a huge fan of regeneration and like healing because it just makes things like. I don't know. That's just me personally. It gets, so yeah. It's like, but then there's also cool moments where like, yeah, Shalane got headshot and she's like, Oh, bother. And it's, this, listen, it's there's great. always, there's always two sides to everything and nuanced things. Like anything can be done well. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, like for instance, for instance, I don't like love triangles, but I've read love triangles. I really liked, right. you know what I mean? So like mm-hmm. inherently it's not my favorite thing, but I've seen it done so well that I have to concede and be like, that was really good. Um, so I'm not saying that just because healing is in a story or whatever mm-hmm. that that it, I automatically dislike it. Um, in fact, I had forgotten about that. So it tells me it wasn't that big of a deal for me uh, whenever I read it. Hmm. Um, but like just on the face of it, like I'm not a huge fan of like healing and slash regeneration of fantasy. Yeah, that's fair. 
that's fair. I think we're going to get a lot of that. <laughs> but I think, um, like we've theorized quite a lot, that um, the power scaling will go way down after after book five. I feel like um, people yeah. are going to get way less powerful. And we're almost going to get a, a soft reset. Hmm. Um, Maybe. It's like, you know... I'm, I'm sure this happened with Magic the Gathering where they like have to cancel all the old cards because it's just gotten just too nah, bad. Now, now they're just like, if you break everything, if everything's broken, you know, <laughs> ma- Magic's a mess right now. It's okay. unfortunate. Um, so should we read the journal entries here to start out? Yeah, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Novani's right. journal, yeah. So chapter five, uh, the journal entry is, the sign on the wall proposed a great danger. Even then, it's deadline. To foresee the future is what is of the void bringers. Mm. Now this one's interesting to foresee the future is of the void bringers. Why? Yeah. It's like a, well, they associate with Odium's power. Like Mm. let's let's peek into the future. So inherently like that scene is evil. Um, That's why there's some conjecture about Renarin because, because with his little corrupted spren, he he can, you know, peek into the future and stuff. Um, Hmm. But hey, you know you. what? I think it's a pretty cool. I, you know what? I'm not hating it. I quite like it. Let let people have a look into the future. Why not? Yeah, let me give me a little peek ski. <laughs> so yeah, um, just another ominous. Like these are really ominous. That's what. That's what. Imagine if you could like look into your future, and it's like pick a time period in your future, and you go to look at. You're like, all right, 25 years, mm. and they're like, oh, you're not around. Mm-hmm. and you'd be like wait what and they'd be like yeah you're not around in 25 years and you're like well when did i go like we can't tell you that you know, yeah. you know i'd be like well, I, I'm gonna die? You have, like no control over it Is yeah we, yeah well i don't want to look then i don't yeah, want to be look. interesting wouldn't it i don't want to look sounds like something the void bringers would do yeah you know what? that's classic void bringer behavior it um, really is but y- if right. you have the power to you're probably gonna have a little peek you oh yeah, I, def- I 100% would. On a late night, you're feeling a bit down. How's my life look? I'm a big why not guy. So like, <laughs> like well, we'll fix it if I regret it. It'll I'm be fine. a big why not guy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gotten me in many tr- trouble many times. Uh, chapter six, this one is this. We had never considered that there might be Parshendi spies uh, hiding among our slaves. This is something else I should have seen. Banger. Probably Navani. Probably. Banger, um, banger, banger epigraph. This is a pretty re- uh, repetitive thing that Sanderson does um, with like servants doubling as spies or working, you know, underneath the noses of the people that they're serving. Uh, we see this in uh, Warbreaker, right? We saw the oh, yeah. people from the other nation. Mm-hmm. They were servants and, um, you know, you can't trust yeah. your servants. Yeah, you right. just uh, well, apparently. You know what? Enslaved people, they might be pretty annoyed about that. And they might, they might uh, be planning some retribution. Can you blame yeah, them? Yeah, they may. Maybe it's not <laughs> money. Just a thought. Just a thought. But hey, I love this because now you read that and you're like, "Ooh, I got to look out for these guys. Where are they?" Um, and it, you know, it positions you in an interesting spot because it's, you know, you're meant to, you're, you're somewhat suspicious, but you're also like, like, let's go, let's go, mm-hmm. Like, let's see what you got. Um, oh yeah, I'm cheering for the part, Shandy. Hell yeah! And you're kind of looking at um, Shen slash Relaine, and you're like, I, I'm just so curious. Like, when we reread this, all right, because they kind of wake up again, and like, yeah, mm. man, that was terrible. I would like to know like how much is going on in their in their minds in this moment, like how much they understand, or like, yeah, is it a moment of like it all floods back once they regain their forms? It's an interesting thought experiment, um, but. Nonetheless, a very ominous line that makes you excited. Yeah, definitely. And uh, has a lot of, uh, you know, repercussions down the line as well. Mm-hmm. So we can uh, take a little peeky here at uh, chapter five. Ideals is the title of it. And we're going to get Kaladin in a Sadius POV, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, so we start with Kaladin and the members of Bridge Four listen to a crier uh, read down our proclamation. The proclamation states that they. All gem hearts won in battle will now belong to the king, and shares of that wealth will be apportioned at the crown's discretion. The men are concerned that this will sow even more disconnect content, I'm sorry, among the high princes, making their job as bodyguards to Dalinar even more difficult. Kaladin orders Rock to start training the cooks for 
the other Bridgman barracks, hoping it will make them less despondent, then heads to the Pinnacle to uh, relieve Scar's team. On the way, Syl worries that Kaladin no longer laughs. Once at the King's Palace, Kaladin is allowed to stay for a meeting consisting of Dalinar, King Alakar, Adolin, Navani, Renarin, General Ka, and his wife, Teshav. Teshav, or Testav, however you want to say it, uh, reports that the High Princes are irate. They had hoped that Dalinar would reconsider, and sending the proclamation out to the public has provoked them. Elikar says that it is a disaster and fears that they'll be dead before the week is out. Dalinar says he'll unite the kingdom and destroy or destroy a trying. The proclamation was made in order to refocus the High Prince's attention to the war, and Dalinar did this knowing that it would enrage them. He wants the High Prince's angry to remind them of why they came to the Shattered Plains in the first place. He then announces his intention to disarm the High Princess by having Adolin begin dueling for Shard Blades and Shard Plate in the armies in their armies. Lastly, when prompted on his endgame, Dalinar states it's his intention to refound the Radiance. He isn't sure exactly why he needs to do this, but he knows he has to. Uh, so then we bounce over to Sadius, good old boy, and it says, Meanwhile, Tarol Sadius sits in front of an elaborate stone table with Oathbringer stuck through it. He thinks about how often he had lusted after the weapon, but now possessing it, it feels hollow. His wife, Lalai, Eli, sorry, yeah. enters the room and mentions that she has been uh, she has used Dalinar's heavy recruitment drive to replace more spies in his war camp. They talk about how the other high princes hate the proclamation and plan to fan the flames of discontent. Sadius wants conquest. He plans to let Dalinar alienate the other high princes and fracture the kingdom, at which point he will, quote, forge a new Alethkar from flame and tears, end quote. Mm, quite, quite, uh, quite interesting how he sees like his purpose, Sadius there at the end. Um, but yes, great summary, courtesy of the Copper Mind. Thank you for that. Yeah, thanks, uh, Copper Mind. Appreciate you. Appreciate your work. Um, I suppose we should talk about the Kaladin section first. Um, what I quite liked initially, um, and it's mentioned in the summary, is how Sil, like when when Sil was concerned that Kaladin wasn't laughing anymore. I like I, that was something I also picked up on, like. They're all, the boys are having a good laugh around Rock and uh, the banter is high and Kaladin's just a sad boy. Um, but there's a little moment later in the chapter where he he does smile for, and it says he smiles for Sil's sake, just to like, you know. I've been there, bro. Get her, yeah, right. You, you know your, your discontent is making everyone uncomfortable, so you feel like you have to pretend to be happy. It's the worst. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Story of my yeah. life. So me, I say literally me all the time. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so it said yeah, he smiled pointedly for Sil's benefit. That's nice though, like because those people help you; they help you so much. Um, just another great little moment for the Sil and Kaladin dynamic, um, which I mm-hmm. always always enjoy. Um, but look, I got to respect Dalinar with his absolute, just his conviction, and just like yeah, I'm just going to get on everyone's bad side right now because it's what I got to do because I've got to reforge an ancient order of knights that nobody believes in. All right, and I'm going to. Why do I need to do this? I don't know. I just <laughs> really know, know that I do. Just been chatting to God a little bit, and it's uh, a little bit of faith. When you, because you're you're in his head, right? So it makes perfect sense. You're like Dalinar doing God's work, literally. Um, but mm-hmm. if you are a member of you know Rosharian society, a Lethe society, this guy's a madman. This guy's insane. Um, what's uh, what's really cool as well as I look at through my extensive notes, man, I was cooking when I read this initially, <laughs> which I remembered why I highlighted some of this stuff. Um, here we go. He does think of Liren, so I should probably mention this one. Hey, um, yes. Mm. He goes seeing. Um, wait, let me get some more context. He's walking up. Um, okay. Unfortunately, on his way, he passed a group of Dalinar surgeons in a field with servants, gathering knobweed sap for an antiseptic. Seeing them made Kaladin think not only of his own efforts gathering the sap, but of his father, Liren. And then he thinks this. If he were here, Kaladin thought as he passed them, he'd ask why I wasn't out there with the surgeons. He'd demand to know why, if Dalinar had taken me in, I hadn't requested to join his medical um, call. So... And I was thinking about this, and like this is the this is the direction I think he's taking Kaladin by the end of the series. I think he will in, embrace this like healing role, whether it's yeah. on surgery or like a mental health perspective. And um, 
like I'm always a little conflicted because I kind of do see Liren's points sometimes, even though he's yeah. quite grating and abrasive about it. Yeah. But like, yeah. You know, it says Kaladin could probably have gotten Gal- uh, Dalinar to employ Bridge Four as all of Bridge Four as, as surgeon assistants. And he could have trained them in medicine instead of the spear. At the same time, he's a radiant. So, like, you kind of like. Yeah, at the same time, you are in a time of war. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. uh, it, then there needs to be healers and stuff. But sometimes the sword is the right tool, I guess. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Possibly. I just think, like, when you read it, you're like, well, of course not. He's a glowy boy. Throw him in the right. in the battlefield. But, like, when I read it now, like, there is a, the, a like a, there's at least a conversation to be had. Whereas I wouldn't even entertain it before. I'd be like, dude, why? Don't think like, surgery. Who cares? Like, let's jump across some chasms. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, dude, what are you thinking? Like, we want to see action stuff. But yeah. if you really think about the the internal struggle. Uh, and, you know, a stressed relationship he has with his dad because of the expectations that are on him. You know, it makes sense that he would have to kind of play a tug of war game in his mind. Yeah. And whenever you're good at multiple things, you, it's always a struggle. Like, what do I invest my time in? No, it's like me. I'm just so talented. Like, I, I it's, <laughs> it's it's a struggle. Yeah. You know? Jimmy's just like, should I work towards the PGA tour or just. Yeah. Do I do I do I sign up or not? It's not a question of whether I can. It's whether I want to. You know, Jimmy over here with his triple bogey, dreaming of dreaming. Bogey, bro, bro. I'm over Man, here. I'm. I'm what you go? You, you bo- I hit under a hundred. I did eighteen holes and I hit under a hundred. My first eighteen. I mean, is that is that good? <laughs> I mean, it's not bad for your first time. It's not yeah, bad. All right. Yeah. All right, dude. Golf yeah. on Rosha. Chasms like that, that's like that's great. The chasms are like. There's, there's there's a constant fear. And if yeah. your ball goes down the chasm, it's done. You got to hit it out of the chasm fiend's teeth. Yeah, it'd be rough. <laughs> um, mate, you got to help me out here. I'm desperately scrolling through my notes here. Um, I'm no, trying to- I, mean, I, the big, I mean, the big thing is, is, is the struggle of Kaladin not being able to smile, but also the idea that Dalinar's actions, yes, they're affecting the High Princes, but they are also causing more stress for Bridge Four mm. because they are worried about the enhanced assassination. So Dalinar is not making many friends at this point, mm. except for Kaladin, Kaladin to some degree, because Kaladin, like, there's this constant like sort of tension between Dalinar and Kaladin where they have this like eye contact and they're both thinking like, I see something in you. Your eyes are so deep. <laughs> yeah. and they're, they're both like vibing. They're vibing yeah. hard. And I guess the question is, right, like, because th- here we go. So, like, after, like, Dallin, I was like, I'm going to refound the Night's Radiant. And everyone's like, you're a madman. Um, he goes, we may not be able to reach for the, for the ancient surge bindings, the powers they had, but we can seek to emulate the Radiance in other ways. I'm set on this. Do not try to dissuade me. And then it says Kaladin narrowed his eyes. So did Dalinar know about Kaladin's powers or didn't he? And um, look, I suppose as we read on and see Kaladin, you know, show off his powers in front of Dalinar, we'll perhaps get a peek into his mind on the reread. But I do kind of have this feeling that like there is something, there is some sort of understanding of something between Kaladin and Dalinar, whether it's a background magical thing or like... Dallin, I really did see what he was doing at the end of the Way of Kings. Like, I guess we're meant to be guessing, but I kind of think, yeah, maybe he does get a sense. Yeah, I mean, I think there's something there. I think he thinks that, I mean, let's not forget what Dalinar has given up to have Bridge Four and have Kaladin close to him. It's not, it's not small by any means, mm. you know? So he at least has a hunch. Yeah. He, yeah. He's, he's like, this guy's a bit weird, but I kind of like him <laughs> at the yeah. very least. Um, then he talks about, then Kaladin starts thinking about the ideals. Um, and then it says, still wouldn't tell him the other three. She said he would know them when he needed to, or he wouldn't and would not progress. It's it, like the ideals are a very interesting thing to me. Like who's planning the, like how, like there's a lot of people were just theorizing what's the fifth ideal. What's it going to be in the next book? Like, and I think a, a lot of that, um, we'll tie into what we saw with Liren because he seems to be dropping ideals like they're hot. Um, it's almost like he's on her. Yeah. I mean, again, another mention of the canon by Jimmy there. 
Thank you very much. Confirmed? For that. Question mark? Confirmed. <laughs> Liam is definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, straight up. Um, but look, yeah, Kaladin is just looking at Dalinar like, who is this? He's, this guy's pretty cool. And yeah. then um then and then Kaladin's kind of on board, like, all right, let's do this nice radiant thing. And also the boys in Bridge Four, Sigzil and so on, they're like, Hey, we've got to measure measure your powers and see what's going on. All of this stuff, right? Let's cut to Sadius here. And I apologize, guys, if I missed stuff again with our schedule's been so interrupted. Um this is not our this is not our standard analysis, but I'm doing my best here. Um, but look, Sadius, all right. Now, what's interesting here, more than Sadius to me, is his wife, Eli, because we get um, mentioned that she has the largest network of spies in yes. the camp. She is like all up in these like secret societies and all that stuff, right? So there's a lot to unpeak here. So... Uh, when you first read it, you're like, oh, yes, villain perspective. Ha, ha, ha. Sadius with Oathbringer on the table. Like, how will I How will I get, you know, da- Dalinar back? And how will I, what does he say with, not with fire and blood, that's what I want to say, but with tears and Fire flames. and tears, <laughs> which is not as cool as fire and blood, let's be honest. <laughs> no, but that's like trademarked. So what are you going to do? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you can't say it. Sanderson's like, fire and blood, wait a minute. That sounds too familiar. Fire and tears. Yeah. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't hit the same. But that, you know what? Sadius is just not that not at that level. He's not Targaryen. No, nah, not yet. He tried. He tried. He did a good Let's effort. Down. Did Sadius do anything wrong? That's my question. Um, just <laughs> <laughs> um okay. So he's also like, Man, I'm old. Man, my wife's ugly, but that's okay. Like that's basically <laughs> what he's thinking about. <laughs> but let's look into Eli. All right. Eli, and this is courtesy of the Copper Mind here. Eli runs the best network of spies and informants in the war camps at the Shattered Plains and is able to keep it close, uh, a closely guarded secret. Her network also includes assassins. As the wife of a high prince, she regularly attends notable events in Isle of Car, such as duels, feasts, and even military meetings, giving her personal access to a wide range of information and members of the nobility. Um, and it keeps going on. Um, here we go. Here we go. So after Terrell's death, Eli continued to run a spy network in Irithiru and then the Shattered Plains, even learning bits and pieces about the activities of Ghostbloods. She's among the few Rosharians at the time that are aware of Shadesmar and civilizations on other planets. She remains adept at seizing power when it is available for the taking. Because while I was thinking about this, um, it was because at the beginning of Rhythm of War, like they're, they're hunting down members of the Sons of Honor, like one of these secret societies that Amran, Amaram was running, uh, well, was a part of, led by the Herald Kalak. It's a whole thing, Jimmy. Don't worry about it. But the whole thing, <laughs> like, don't worry about the details. But Eli was basically part of this chain of like members. So, like, yeah. She doesn't really know what's going on, but she's part of these little societies. Um, she's low on the ranks. Yeah, she's low on the ranks. But I remember, I distinctly remember scenes uh, when they're talking to her in um, Rhythm of War. I think it's Adolin and Shallan. And she's like talking about Nalthus, which is the planet from Warbreaker and Skadrill. But she's saying, I remember she was saying them slightly wrong. Like her information wasn't quite there. So like she's tangentially aware of the Cosmere and that this goes beyond whatever the heck is happening. Yeah. She's a part of something bigger. Yeah. Right. So my question is like, how much does she know now? That's what I was thinking when I was re- reading this. I'm like, how much mm. does Sadius's wife know? And then I thought, how much does Sadius himself know? Because he was a question, you know, Gavilar's right hand man for a lot of this. It, it feels like from the Sadius POV, I don't think there's much tips that he knows any of it. Yeah. You don't get that sense at all. No. I don't Not think. really, um, which is curious because like it's interesting because when you read, um, when you look into Gavilar more, it seems like he trusted Amram quite a bit and Amram seems quite clued into to all this stuff. But Sadis was kind of like his bro that doesn't know too much about all the mystical stuff. He's just like, yeah, dude, let's like, let's conquer this. Let's conquer Lethkar, but I'm not yeah. going to talk to you about my spooky like... Um, travels through the cosmere and my weird herald friends and stuff yeah so why is that is the question maybe didn't fully trust him like would you possible 
would you? Or forward? he know that uh, Eli is or Ilya, how you say her name? Yeah, you had it right. Yeah, is involved, and maybe they're not working towards the same goal. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, or or he just compartmentalizes. Like that's your job, and uh, yeah, you know, I'll, just leave, just leave a left card to me. You know, I'm just mm-hmm. gonna. And I see. I think that's just through reading this perspective. It seems that that's what he's most concerned with. He just wants to like almost like continue what uh, Gavilar he and Dalinar started back in the day. Yeah, in the Oathbringer flashbacks. But it's cool. Like it's it's very cool to to have this little nugget so early on. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's about it. I think that is about it for this chapter. Yeah, um, pretty straightforward one for yeah, the most part. Pretty chill. Um, yeah. But the, so chapter six. Oh, dude. Little I'm, Shalon. Dude, actually. Shalon in this book. It's the best. It's the best stuff. They're slammers. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, the ch- tap- chapter title is ironically Terrible Destruction, <laughs> which we've talked about her causing the desolation, which is interesting, right? Mm hmm. So it uh, starts out, Shallan sits on the deck of the Wind's Pleasure, bundled up because of the cold. She's observing and taking notes on the complex geometric Spren, who had she had seen, uh, or how she had named Pattern. Pattern asks about the concept of food and replies, terrible destruction, <laughs> when Shallan describes eating. Very interesting. <laughs> That's great. Uh, yeah. I, it's, it, it's funny, but also I'm like, hmm. Okay. I wonder if that, wonder if that means yeah. anything else. Um Shalon notes that pattern is connecting increasingly complex thoughts. It's almost like she's training an AI in a way. Uh, when she asks him about his first memories, pattern starts to vibrate and Shalon can hear wind blowing through branches and the deck starts to turn to a dirt path in front of her. Shalon is horrified and the images vanish. Just then Yab comes over and introduces her to quote unquote new kid a six foot tall hulk of a man y'all but tricks new kid into doing gallery duty for him uh or galley duty for him uh, which pattern seems to like shallan asks him if he likes lies to which pattern replies that he likes good lies true lies shallan heads below the deck to her cabin where she gets caught up in her research hours go by before she closes her books and her spheres are getting dim she feels satisfied her life seems to finally be coming together she fishes some newly restored spheres out of her safe pouch to replace those in the goblet but strangely they are also completely done when she goes to ask Yasna for some new spheres, Sean knows that Yasna is uncharacteristically disconcerned. She seems exhausted and her poise has been replaced by worry. They discuss the return of surge binding and Yasna asks Shalon focus on learning illumination surge rather than soul casting as the latter can be dangerous. Yasna also reveals that she is worried about the Parshman who she thinks are secretly the void bringers. They worry that because the Parshmen are so integrated into Vorn society, they could cause their utter collapse if they rebelled. Yasna speaks of how in ages past, the heralds would return before desolations and train the Knights Radiant. She reveals that she hopes to find a path to Irathiru, a legendary city of Knights Radiant in the Shattered Plains. There she will try to find information that will convince the Alethi leaders to expel the parchment. Before Shalon leaves, Yasna gives her a book that contains information on the Order of Lightweavers. The book is called Words of Radiance. <laughs> yeah. Shalon goes to sleep planning to read the book we're reading in the morning. She is awoken by scream, shouts, and smoke. Um, oh, banger ending. Banger ending and, and a lot of stuff here to consider. Um, the the whole vibrating thing with pattern. What do oh you make God. of this? Because yeah, so, I, I can't so remember if we know this stuff. There's so much goodness here. So much more um, than the previous chapter. Firstly, what you said in the summary that like very AI like, I find the spread to be hugely um comparable to AI, especially Patton in these scenes, how he's like learning about you just like they're becoming self aware, right? Whenever they start yeah. watching someone. And it's very like feels like talking to early versions of Chat GPT, but like he keeps iterating on himself in real time, which is very cool. Getting new training modules. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, it's something. A little bit of world building. Um, they're talking about being um, near Thalina. And uh, she said she's talking about the frozen ocean. She's occasionally seen snow and ice, um, but an entire ocean of it. Wow, amazing. Again, just me pining for more biomes and uh, information. <laughs> Dude, you're so flexible. How are you doing that? Jimmy's yeah, like, like 
<laughs> Chewie's like lifted his leg. Our screen is split in half and his leg is parallel to the split. Like that's insane, dude. Hey, that listen, you, you got to keep limber. You know what I mean? Look at these hamstrings. What are you doing? Bro. Look at these hamstrings. How did you do that, dude? My leg would snap both. off if I tried that. That is crazy. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> this is, I'm literally doing a split. <laughs> this is insane. What? Jeez. Yeah, you got you got to stay limber, folks. Wow. You never know when you might end up in shades, Mar. <laughs> Christian's face was ridiculous. I broke Christian. I was literally just stretching. I gotta keep. I gotta keep doing random things to distract you. That's hilarious. Back to the chapter, guys. All right. Okay. <laughs> so the vibrating thing with pattern. Okay. So, um, so okay. Let's talk about this. Um. Pattern connects increasingly complex thoughts. Shalan wrote, "Abstractions come easily to him." Early, he asked me the questions. Why? Why you? Why B? I interpreted this as asking me my purpose. When I replied to find truth, he easily seemed to grasp my meaning. And yet, some simple realities, such as why people need to eat, completely escape him. Okay, so um, she's writing, and then he goes, "Why this?" And she goes, "To remember." Um, and then she's trying to explain memories. Um, it means to be able to know what you did in the past in other moments, ones that happened days ago. And he's like, I can't remember, basically. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. It's written a lot more interestingly, but he's like, I can't remember. Yeah. And then she's like, what do you first remember? And he's like, first with you. And she's like, on the ship? And he's like, no, green, green food, food not eaten. He's like, plants? And he's like, yes, many plants, he vibrated. And she thought she could hear in... Um, that vibration with the blowing of the wind through branches. Shalan breathed in. She could almost see it. The deck in front of her changing to a dirt path, her box becoming a stone bench faintly, not really there, but almost. Her father's gardens pattern on the ground drawn in the dust. Remember, Pat said in a voice like a whisper. And then, you know, Shalan freaks out. It's like, no. So, right, so a few things are happening here. She's light weaving very clearly. Um, she does this, does this a lot, accidentally like weaving memories from her past. And this is the big question, right? So we know there's the whole debacle with Shalane's mom, hashtag yeah. mom's a herald, and she killed her, and then the start of the desolation. Anyway, moving on from that, there's the question of like, okay, so she had Testament as her first friend, and then Patton enters the chat at some point. Yes. This, this serves to suggest that Patton was also there in the, in the young days of Shalane's life. Because there, is we there don't and convinced her to kill her friend or yeah he's like, like that's there's, a, there's still like a whole bunch of conjecture about like yeah what the timeline is between testament and um pattern because they you know they've got testament now in shades while they've met they've met it i don't know if it's uh, he or her or it um but yeah they've met testament but they it's a dead eye so they don't know yet we don't know we simply mm. do not know um but it seems like Patton was there that day, or at least soon after. But any thought of the the gardens and what's going on with Shalan back there is still very cool. How convenient. interesting. Yeah, it's very cool, right? Um, also, do you know about this new kid? Do you want me to tell you about He's the a new ghost kid? Blood. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> new kid straight yeah. up with ghost blood ready to, to Yeah, to, knowing what's coming. I mean, yeah. it makes me go, <laughs> Oh, yeah, clearly ghost blood. And you know what? Patton knows this, right? Did you pick up on that? I I did, yeah. Right. And why wouldn't he? Because well, he likes no, lies. He's, he's just like oh lies. Like the whole time they're talking about the new kid, he's like, oh, these lies are great. <laughs> it's so funny. It's so cool. Um. Oh, where is it? There, there is a part uh, that was cool. All right, but I was looking into the new kid a bit, right? So we know he's like a, a ghost blood because we know shortly after they're gonna try and assassinate Yasna, right? Um, so let's read about him. It says Yalp walking over with the new kid, a six foot tall Hulk of a man who was at least five years Yalp senior. They picked him up in, um, some place, the last port. Tosbeck wanted to be sure they wouldn't be undermanned during the last leg to Nuna Tonaton. But the thing is, right, that place is in Thalina and Marais, the, the head of the ghost bloods and Rosha is also from there. So I was like, that's a nice little hint that he's from yeah. the same area. That's cool. Um, and then like, he's talking to like, he, he's talking to the new guy 
and he's trying to convince him that he was attending near Taravangian. So I'm like, mm. like, yeah, I was trying to show off that he's legit and he was helping with the king and stuff. But I'm like, this sounds like the ghost blood's inquiring about Taravangian and like what these guys have to do with him, just trying to get more info, yeah. which is which is nice. And then like the new kid isn't really replying. He doesn't have any speaking things. And I'm like, that could also su- suggest he's a world hopper because he can't speak the language super well. So it's like, this is very, like, nice little details that could that could be true. Yeah, and the, according to the Copper Mom, we also don't know if this person survived the, the next chapter or not. Oh, so okay. it makes you wonder if, like, we're going to get this at some point in the future, or is this literally just a throwaway character that was a ghost blood, random, you know, low, low B, or mm. is it going to end up being someone that's named, you know? Mm. But potentially just, like, some, some dude. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like, <laughs> so, he, like Patton says, lies, lies from from the Yalb, and you're meant to think that it's him, like when when he was boasting about himself, yeah, reading with Chiromagian. But it's like it's about this guy, which is fun. Yep. That's very fun. Um, but yeah, like she see um, Yalb sees her soul casting, so that's very clear. So that was yeah. what was happening there, um, and then we get a little. Um, interesting thing here, right? Um, about the Night Watcher. Did you notice this little, this little bit? So, yeah, a little old magic coming into play here. Yeah. So she's reading like accounts. You know, obviously she's studying with Yasna, and it says the Night Watcher is obviously. Um. Oh wait. Let Let me do. I preface this. So it says she's talking about the different levels of spread, right? So. Spren like there's spren like Patton who can talk to you and so on and there's other types. Um and it says the Night Watcher is obviously one of those, Eli wrote, Shalan copying the passage. The records of conversations with her, and she is definitely female, despite what rural Alethi folk tales would have one believe, are numerous and credible. Shubalai herself, intent on providing a first hand scholarly report, visited the Night Watcher and recorded her story word for word. And of course, that's where he cuts away and we don't know what happened there. Um, mm-hmm. but you know, a slight, a, a little nod to the night watcher there. Like there's all this, like, is night watcher just a facet of cultivation or is it a separate thing? It seems to be working for cultivation to some degree. It's something I'll have to remind myself of, to be honest, but I thought it was worth mentioning if anyone wants to add to that in the comments this week. Yeah. Night watcher is definitely one of the more intriguing pieces of like the fantastical elements on Roshar, just because we know that old magic is, literally kind of like a meta term for the magic being not explained <laughs> which is mm-hmm. cool mm-hmm. so i don't think I'll ever, everything is ever going to be explained with night watcher if, if we're going to go that path with it but you know there could still be more context of how but how night watcher exists in roshar mm-hmm. yeah I, the old magic is so fascinating i agree and then um classic thing just like we saw with kaladin like her her spheres are going done just because mm-hmm. she's like doing- we've seen this song and dance before yep. and then Patton goes mm, lies <laughs> it's just so <laughs> funny he's just great he's great value um oh man I kind of wish I did reread this now because I feel like there's a lot of little things all right so I guess we're gonna cut just before we wrap up I want to cut to Yasna right because yes I got the vibe that she's worried about a whole lot more than what we think She's oh, about, without a doubt. Right? I mean, to be fair, at this point, the Parshman being possibly, you know, having spies or turning or whatever. At this point, the series is a humongous deal. Like we know what happens. But of course, I mean, she's very stressed out about that. But at the same time, you know, she's obviously telling her that she should uh, focus more on sir or um, I'm sorry, on uh, white la light weaving. Mm hmm. And whatnot, instead of trying to soul cast all the time, uh, which is kind of interesting. So you know that Yasna has an idea of what Shalon's capable of. Um, oh yeah, a complete idea. She's so yeah, and learning and learning illumination and whatever. So um, yes, and she, you think she's aware that some bad's about to happen? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Seems it's more like, like um, I kind of I don't know if she's fully letting on what she's worried about. Um, Obviously, there is big end of the world stuff happening, but I just feel like still um, she's holding a, a little bit back around Shalon. But what yeah. is interesting is that, like, as they 
enter the room, Patton's like, oh, truth. <laughs> that, like that's how they get spotted. So he's like, this, mm. this is like genuine Yasna right here. Like stressed out, freaking the hell out. Um, and also a lot of truths that she's bringing up stuff, saying that maybe the parchment are void bringers, Irithiru, like these are all things that have kind of come true. Uh, Harold's return before desolations, the train night's radiance. Like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. there's a lot of stuff here that's going to be confirmed in the next, you know, two and a half books or three books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A hundred percent. And I love when we see like that, the characters are looking at um, like the in-world books match what we see. So it's yeah. like, when she's seeing the book that Yasna is looking at um, and it says two spheres at the center looked almost like pupils, the double eye of the almighty. And it's like the, that picture of like the 10 essences you get at the back of your way of Kings book. Yeah. The U S thing. I'm like, Oh, that's what they're looking at. That's so cool that we can engage with that too, as we read yeah. and that they have the same sort of resources in the, uh, in the books. Um, and then she's like, Saying to Shalan, like, I'm dead certain that the cryptic sent you to me because they know I need to train you. I don't think so. I'm not. I don't know. No, maybe. Uh, like, she might think that, but I don't know if that's necessarily true. Yeah. I think that's debatable. I mean, mm, it's something I'd have to think more about, but I don't necessarily think that they w- Cause there is Because seem, there seems to be a joint recruitment thing going on. Like, everyone's like, you know, make your radiance now. Yeah. But how much the Sprint are talking to each other is still, I guess, up for debate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then also a fierce Sprint shows up. So she's absolutely packing it. Yasna is freaking out. And she's talking about the desolations and they're going to destroy us. And she starts saying stuff about the Pashendi, which is not true. She's like, Pashendi can sing in time with each other no matter how far they are separated. They have a, an ability community to communicate that we don't understand. Quantum That's, entanglement. Yeah, but that's not true though. I don't think that is the case. I think they've that's a wrong they've equated that wrong. Yes. Correctly. Yeah, I don't think they can do that. They do sing in time and stuff and with the rhythms and their songs and in battles. So but she's I don't getting think... it she's not getting all the details correct. Yeah, right. Um, so yeah, look. I'm just trying to trying to trying to go through all these. Um and then we kind of get the mission statement, right? Um, and then yeah, it's like, oh, you're too optimistic. Um, and then we get words of radiance, the words of radiance, um, the name drop, name drop. And then, you know, bye bye Yasna. See you later. Yeah. Off she goes. Big, big moves. And this is where this scene will continue in book 10. Call it now. <laughs> like talk to me when I'm an old man and know that I was right, that we will get the continuation of this scene in book 10 in the Asna flashbacks. From yeah, like I would agree. blood I would on the agree ground to to what she did, hundred percent. I agree. That's I exciting, agree. but so far away. <laughs> yeah, so it's about forty years away. away. Yeah, we got a long time to go. <laughs> but yeah, man. Oh, do we do we maybe just leave the span rates for another time? Yeah, we uh, we ended up talking a little bit more about this chapter than I think we thought we would. Um, yeah, I think especially because the span rates we have are pretty thorough. I think it's probably a good idea to give them their proper time. Mm-hmm. Um. So we'll, we'll make sure to have some uh, time at the end of the next one, I think. For sure. And uh, look, next next week we will have freshly read the chapters. It won't be me scrambling. Um, so look forward to that. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, the, the shaky return of Lost in Rosha. I forgot I had a podcast for a minute there. Yeah, you know, sometimes you just got to recalibrate. Yeah, a bit of a recalibration moment. Um, but yeah thank you guys as always for accompanying us on this episode of Lost in Rosha remember the most important chapter a man can read is the next one we'll see you next time as we jump into chapter 7 and 8 of Words of Radiance yes and if you like this episode enjoyed it at all of the podcast be sure to leave us a review on whichever platform you listen on if you have uh, feedback or questions or theories span read us at lostinroshar at gmail.com we'll see you next time on Lost in Roshar and remember to keep that safe hand covered